Hey folks, this is Riker with a Diablo 3 patch 2.7 Season 23 Wizard Build Guide. This season sees the Firebird set rise from the ashes back into power. And if you checked out our tier list video, you'll see that we've got Firebirds currently in A tier, but Blizzard has stated that they might be buffing the set by the time the season launches, which could launch Firebirds back into S tier and possibly into being the best build of season 23. In this video, we're going to go over the gear, the play style, and the skills that you're going to want to rock this build. It should also be noted that season 23 doesn't have a season specific theme, meaning this guide also applies to non-season and potentially to future seasons. The gameplay footage you're seeing right now is from top player and max role content lead Rob clearing a GR145. And I'll pop a link in the video description below if you want to follow along with the written version of this guide written by top player Chewy. But now let's dive in. So this build revolves around the renewed, the revamped Firebird set. The two-piece bonus, Disintegrate, ignites enemies, causing them to take 3,000% weapon damage per second until they die. When you die, Meteor falls from the sky, revives you once per 60 seconds. Now we should note that that 3,000% weapon damage, that might be buffed by the time Season 23 releases. The four-piece, Casting Disintegrate, adds combustion stacks that reduce the cooldown of teleport by 2% per stack, stacks up to 50 times. You gain 80% damage reduction while maintaining combustion stacks. Doesn't matter if you have two stacks or 50, 80% damage reduction, very easy to maintain now. This also means that 2% cooldown on teleport per stack, and it's very fast to build up stacks, at 50 stacks, that's 100% cooldown on teleport, meaning instant teleport you're zipping around the screen with no delay extreme mobility and then the six piece you gain two thousand percent increased damage while ignite is applied to a target hitting an ignited enemy with a non-channeling fire spell deals ignite damage multiplied by combustion stacks all right that sounds a little complicated but it's really not and first off, we'll mention that that 2,000% damage, that might also be buffed by the time Season 23 releases. We gotta wait and see what Blizzard's gonna do. But basically, this means this is a build that is not buffing any one specific skill. You have the freedom to attack with whatever skill you want. As long as you're hitting with a fire skill that is non-channeling, then you're going to apply a chunk of damage. What is that chunk? That chunk is the ignite damage from the two-piece bonus, which is currently 3,000, multiplied by your combustion stacks, which you want to have always at 50. So currently 50 times 3,000, that's 150,000% weapon damage. Anytime you hit with a fire spell that is a non-channel fire spell. So that's what the core of this build revolves around. It's about applying that fire chunk that damage chunk as many times as possible as often as possible so evidently we'll want to benefit from the full six piece bonus of this set which in this case we're going to do by equipping five pieces plus a ring of royal grandeur we'll also want to work into this build a death wish this item is just so powerful for wizards that any opportunity you have to work it into a build you're going to do so while channeling for at least one second, all damage is increased by 325%. With this build's playstyle, you will be able to work that in. Now you might ask, but wait a minute, we just said that this multiplier on the six piece only applies when you're using a non-channeling spell? We'll get there. Hold on. Now before we go over what other gear you want, let's take a look at the skill setup to explain what skills we're going to be using to trigger that chunk of fire damage because this is where the magic happens so first off we're taking disintegrate chaos nexus now you might ask hey how come you're not using the fire version of disintegrate well we don't need to disintegrate by itself will ignite enemies and we're picking chaos nexus because that's the one that's going to hit as many enemies as possible to build up our combustion stacks as quickly as possible we're of course going to take teleport for mobility the rune doesn't really matter but in this case we're going to take safe passage in order to gain some damage reduction because we can be teleporting all the time and we gain this buff for five seconds that means that we can basically be maintaining 25 percent damage reduction all the time we're going to take magic weapon deflection 
little bit of a damage buff. But more importantly, that deflection rune gives us an absorb shield, which synergizes so well with our gearing. We'll go over that in a bit. Next, we're taking Explosive Blast, Chain Reaction. On a six second cooldown, which we're going to be shortening quite a bit, Explosive Blast will erupt multiple Chain Reaction explosions each time triggering our Firebird's six piece bonus. It's also an area of effect, so it's hitting multiple enemies at the same time. But that's not even the star of the show yet. Mirror Images, Duplicates. On a 15 second cooldown, the Duplicates rune lets you summon four mirror images. They're gonna taunt nearby enemies. They last for seven seconds, have 50% of your life, and they're gonna cast spells on your skill bar. Now those spells only deal 10% of your damage, but who cares what your damage is because they're applying Firebird's damage. So we're going from one of you applying the Firebird's six piece bonus to five of you applying the Firebird's six piece bonus. And then the last skill that we wanna take, which is the skill that we really want our mirror images to be casting, is gonna be Spectral Blades, Flame Blades. We're also taking this so that we can gain that up to 30% increased damage. Now for our passives, we're gonna take Evocation. We wanna reduce those cooldowns by 20%. We're gonna take Galvanizing Ward. As long as you have not taken damage in the last five seconds, you gain a protective shield. So again, shields on shields for wizard because of our gearing, which we'll go over soon. Lastly, we're going to take audacity. You deal 30% additional damage to enemies within 15 yards. We're going to be in your face. So this is a nice damage buff. And lastly, we're taking elemental exposure. Damaging enemies with arcane, cold, fire, or lightning will cause them to take 5% more damage from your attacks for 5 seconds and these stacks. So we're actually on this fire build stacking different damage types to benefit from elemental exposure and thus 20% more damage. Alright, let's go over now the exact items that we want. So as we said, we're wearing 5 pieces of firebirds. That's going to be helm, chest, gloves, boots or pants, and the offhand. Now the reason it's boots or pants is because we want to work in the Captain Crimson set into this build, which will be belt and either pants or boots. The Captain Crimson set gives you 20% cooldown reduction, 20% resource cost reduction, and then the three piece makes you deal more damage based on how much cooldown reduction you have and makes you take less damage based on how much resource cost reduction you have. We want to be building up cooldown for our mirror images and for our explosive blasts, so this works great. Since we're taking a Ring of Royal Grandeur in our cube, we'll also work in two pieces of the Oghild set to benefit from the three-piece bonus. The two-piece just reduces damage taken by 15%, increases damage dealt by 30%, and the three-piece reduces damage from elites by 30%, increases damage against elites by 30%. Then for our necklace, we're gonna take squirts. And this is the reason that we want those absorb shields, because while not taking damage, your damage is increased by up to 100%, and your damage taken is increased by up to 50. But as long as it is an absorb shield being hit, that does not break squirts. It's only when you're taking damage to your actual life, not to your shields. That's why we want to buff shields. We're going to take an Obsidian Ring of the Zodiac to further help with our cooldowns in order to be able to continuously chain those explosive blasts. We'll take a Convention of Elements to round out the build, just another damage multiplier. This isn't a build in which you need to rigorously manage your Convention rotation window. I know a lot of players don't enjoy doing that. You could just set it and forget it in this case. Evidently, ensuring that you're dealing damage while in fire rotation will maximize your output, but this isn't a build in which you have to align a whole bunch of different skill rotations. In our cube, we're going to want an orb of infinite depth. We're using explosive blast, and chaining this will give us more damage and damage reduction. We'll also use a mantle of channeling. While channeling, we're going to deal more damage and take less damage. For our legendary gems, for pushing greater rifts, you're going to want an enforcer gem, which you only need to get to level 25 simply for the effect that your pets take 90% less damage. You don't want your mirror images dying on you. You want to keep them up, and the higher you go in GRs, the quicker they're going to evaporate. So the more that enforcer becomes mandatory. It should be noted, though, that they will not benefit 
from the damage of the Enforcer. They are applying the six-piece damage buff of Firebirds, not their own damage. We'll want to take a bane of the Trapped, great big damage multiplier against crowd-controlled enemies. At level 25, it applies its own crowd control to nearby enemies. We want to be near enemies to benefit from our Audacity passive, Great Synergy. We'll also be taking a Taeguk channeling build. With this gem, channeling gives us damage and gives us armor. As for the exact stats that we want on every piece of gear, starting with our weapon, we're going to want cooldown reduction, which is very important to this build, damage percent, and damage versus elites. We're ideally aiming for 66.67% cooldown reduction. Also, folks, you want the damage type on your weapon to be rolled to either cold or lightning in order to benefit as much as possible from elemental exposure passive. For our offhand, Firebird's Eye, you'll want crit chance, arcane power, increased damage versus elites. You'll notice we're not getting area damage anywhere, and that's because procs don't proc procs. In other words, the six-piece bonus of Firebirds does not synergize, does not work at all or trigger area damage. That makes area damage a wasted stat on this build. For our helm, we want intelligence, vitality, and crit chance. And of course, we'll want a diamond in the helm for cooldown reduction. For our shoulders, intelligence, vitality, cooldown, resource cost reduction. For our chest, intelligence, vitality, life. For what you're going to put in the sockets in your helm and your pants. If you want more damage, you go with topazes for intelligence. If you want more toughness, for survivability, you go with either rubies or emeralds for more armor. For your pants, intelligence, vitality, armor. For your boots, intelligence, vitality, armor, all resist. For your obsidian ring of the zodiac, crit chance, cooldown, resource cost reduction. For your convention of elements, crit chance, crit damage, damage. For your bracers, fire damage, intelligence, vitality, crit chance. For your amulet, fire damage, crit chance, crit damage. And for your belt, intelligence, vitality, life percent, and armor. For your paragon point priority, get your move speed up to 25%, then max out your arcane power, then dump into intelligence. Although you could pump into vitality until you get about 1 million health. For offense, cooldown reduction, then crit chance and crit damage, maintaining a global 1 to 10 ratio between the two until they're maxed out. Then attack speed. For defense, armor, life, all resist, life regen. And for utility, resource cost reduction, life per hit, and pickup radius. Don't even bother putting into area damage. All it will do is add lag to your game for no benefit. For your follower, you're going to want to go with an Enchantress. For her skills, we'll take Temporal Pulse in order to apply a crowd control and thus benefit from our Bane of the Trapped. We need to take Prophetic Harmony for the extra cooldown reduction. That's the entire reason we're taking Enchantress. We're going to take Powered Shield for some extra defense and extra crowd control, again, to benefit from our Bane of the Trapped. And lastly, we'll take Focused Mind for a bit more attack speed. For items, you're going to be taking the Immortality Relic. We're going to take the Flavor of Time Amulet, which will emanate to us, meaning we benefit from it. This will double the effect of pylons. Very strong power. We'll take Nemesis Bracers. Again, emanate to us. We click shrines. We click pylons in a rift. Enemy champion spawns. Oculus Ring will make damage pools spawn on the ground. When you stand in them, you'll deal up to 85% more damage. For the other ring, you can put a weird ward on her, and you'll want to combine that with a lightning damage weapon like the Thunder Fury. That'll cause some extra crowd control. However, an alternative setup is to put a unity on her and take off your Convention of Elements, put a unity on yourself to double your toughness. We'll take a Mempo of Twilight for more attack speed. We'll take Tal Rasha's chest for more attack speed. We'll take a Witching Hour Belt for more attack speed. And we're going to take two pieces of Kane's Destiny set for more attack speed. We'll give her some ice climbers to make her immune to freeze and immobilize effects. And we'll take some homing pads to emanate to us so that if ever we want to town portal out, we won't get interrupted. Now, as for what we want on every piece of gear, intelligence. Intelligence, intelligence, intelligence. Her powers scale off of intelligence. Shove intelligence everywhere you can, including in sockets in your jewelry. After that, your second priority is attack speed. Those are the only two stats that will matter. As for the gameplay itself, it's pretty self-explanatory. First thing you do is cast Magic Weapon, make sure you get that buff running. Then you cast Disintegrate to get your 80% damage reduction buff. Build up your 50 stacks as quickly as you can. Then you cast Teleport 
to get your 25% damage reduction. You cast Explosive Blast into enemies in order to get your damage buff and damage reduction from your Orb of Infinite Depth. And then you just make sure you got your mirror images out when you want to be dealing damage. Once you get your Explosive Blast chain reaction going, just make sure it's constantly casting. Just remember this simple mnemonic device. Nenebekib. Never not be casting Explosive Blast. And that's gonna wrap up this video. But do be sure to check out our tier list video as well as our video on fast leveling for when a new season starts. And stay tuned for more Diablo 3 coverage. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my Twitch, Patreon, and YouTube supporters for making these videos possible. If you like what you see on this channel and want to support the creation of more content, you can consider pledging on YouTube or Patreon and unlocking behind the scenes content, monthly virtual hangouts, and more. If you enjoyed this video, please share it, check out these other videos, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders for more Diablo content.